So it is no secret that RGT85 is a fan of professional wrestling. Honestly, the only things I really like talking about are like the New York Knicks, video games, cars, and professional wrestling. I don't care about anything else. I'm a giant child in a man's body, but at least I understand that. At least I'm aware of that. And, you know, growing up in the late 80s, early 90s, Hulkamania was running wild. And of course, with the success of pro wrestling, you start to have video games. I'm even writing an N64 wrestling games book that, well, it's pretty much done. We're just working on the design of it. So I'll hopefully have some more updates on that in the near future. But with the WWE games, they've definitely been of varying quality. WWE 2K18 on the Nintendo Switch, absolute crap. WWE 2K20 almost sunk the franchise, but with 2K22, it was kind of a return to form. I didn't really play that game that much, but 2K23, I did. I actually bought it when it was on sale, which is why I never made a video on it because... Well, it just wouldn't have been a timely thing, but I actually liked what that game brought to the table. So with WWE 2K24, I went all out, man. I didn't get a review copy of it. I bought the Super Collector's Edition that cost me like $120, but it came with all the DLC and stuff like that. So I was kind of stoked on this game, and I've been playing it a bunch, and I want to share my thoughts with you on this. So if this is your first time on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and be sure to share the video around if you enjoyed it and if you didn't enjoy it. Now, as as far as the game is concerned, I'm only going to talk about things that I play within this game. So I'm not going to talk about like the the fictional story modes that have like two different people that go on like two different paths. I never play those. They don't interest me. I, you know, just a, a random character. Like, I guess it's supposed to be like some representation of yourself. I don't care about it. Doesn't interest me. I never play that. I used to play the ones that had the actual wrestlers, but as far as the fictional ones are concerned, I never really delve into that. And I also never delve into the my faction or the whole card based thing because I hate card games. Like, I don't know how many times I have to say this, but I do not like card games in my video games. Like, get them out. Go away. You're annoying. You are a microtransaction nickel and dime mechanic in most games, and you're a nuisance in other games. So I'm primarily going to be focusing on the gameplay of the main game and the WrestleMania showcase mode because that's really what I care about with this. Now, as far as the WrestleMania showcase mode is concerned, I'm actually a big fan of WWE 2K14's WrestleMania showcase case mode but rgt you said you never played that one that much in your wrestling games ranking video you're right i did say that and you know what i did i went out and bought the game for the xbox 360 and i absolutely love it great game you guys were completely right on that i do read the comments and i'm a fan of that game absolute masterpiece so i was wondering how it was going to be comparative to that and there are some key differences with this that i actually think kind of work in this game's favor first and foremost you have Corey graves kind of breaking down all the wrestlemania events which i thought was really cool i can't really show it because it's real-time wwe footage so you know that's kind of off limits you know with some of the events they have like hulk hogan talking about wrestlemania 3 in a never before seen interview which i believe was exclusive to this game so the little hulkamaniac in me was like this is amazing and well worth my you know 120 dollar price point when the hulkster starts talking to me as far as how the game mode itself works you basically have missions like you did in previous games that have similar things legends of wrestlemania wwe 2k14 you do the missions that you have to do and it's blended in with actual real-time footage of these events it's pretty well done one thing i really like about it is there's no commentary now you might think that's kind of weird but i always thought it was weird to have like jerry lawler or michael cole calling like wrestlemania events that they had nothing to do with there's just kind of like this weird music that plays that actually kind of suits the mood much better than the other commentary i feel does now one sort of drawback to this is wwe has a long list of people that they don't associate with or they don't have the rights to the likeness to so people like mean gene okerlin's faces blurred out and earl hebner's faces blurred out in the footage kind of takes you out of it a little bit as you get deeper into it you see that other people such as vince mcmahon have their face blurred out like I get it. It's an optics thing. But, you know, he was like the, the reason the WWF became this whole big thing. I don't know. Like, I get it. But on the other hand, it's kind of like, well, you know, you, you didn't know then. So, like, 
you know, but you know how people are nowadays. So that was kind of a little bit of a detriment. But overall, I think this is really cool. You can unlock various things by playing through it, such as arenas and different wrestlers and stuff like that. I, of course, have the premium DLC package, so I had access to all the wrestlers, but a very cool mode, you know, lots of intricacies, lots of nice little details. George the Animal Steel is ringside for the Ricky Steamboat versus uh, Macho Man Randy Savage match, which, you know, that's that's pretty cool for accuracy is there was a whole that was kind of one of the main you know things in that so very cool mode i definitely like it kind of a one and done thing but there's so much wrestlemania to span through and like the additional content definitely makes it very cool now gameplay wise the game is pretty similar to wwe 2k 23 with some minor differences going on the first thing that i noticed with the game is of course the new game match types you have two new match types in this well you really have more than two new match types because you also have the special referee but i haven't really done that one much i'm just going to focus Focus primarily on the um, casket match and the ambulance match. There also is a gauntlet match. Should you want to do that? I don't know. I, I have no real desire to do that. But, you know, the two new matches, the casket ma mode and the ambulance match, they're pretty solid, I feel. Bit of a novelty, but I would rather have them than not have them. I think the ambulance match is a little bit better than the casket mode because like the casket man i don't know why i keep saying casket mode the casket match definitely feels a bit more restrictive comparative to the ambulance match whereas the ambulance match you know you could climb on top of the ambulance you could do moves on top of the ambulance you're kind of limited to what you can do within the casket match however it's still a pretty fun mode you know they're both welcome additions because i would rather have them in there than not have them in there another thing is like a striking mini game where like once a match you'll get into like this striking mini game where you have to hold down x to hit it in like a green sphere kind of like you know a boo yeah boo yeah sort of situation where two people are slapping each other or punching each other nice little thing you know i thought that was pretty cool and one of the big new additions to the game is of course the ability to throw weapons so you can sabu a chair into someone's face and let me tell you this is a very welcome addition this is good stuff because it's absolutely hilarious. Like like chucking a table or chucking like a sledgehammer at someone and just dinking them in the side of the head. Very, very satisfying. Very, very satisfying and very well done. You know, I think it adds a new layer of strategy to matches that have weapons in it. And it's a lot of fun. It makes weapons matches even more fun than they already are. You still have stuff like flaming tables and your trash cans and your kendo sticks and stuff like that. You could just now throw most of them. Roster wise, I think the roster roster is actually very well done in this game um there's like over 200 people in it which is absolutely crazy and of course anyone that you want to be added into the game you can always go to download them via the community creation so if you need your brock lesnar or your vince mcmahon or whatever other wrestler you want they are available there i will say i definitely like the introduction of scott steiner in this game because it's like early 90s steiner and he has the steiner screwdriver as his finisher and it just looks absolutely brutal in this game rick rude is also in the game who hasn't been around for quite a while in wwe video games and i would actually say this is rick rude's best character model that they've ever had of course i have to dissect all the hogan stuff though and yes there is a ton of hogan's in this game which which made RGT a very happy boy. Not only do you have classic Hogan, you have NWO Hogan, and of course you have returned WWE 02-ish Hulk Hogan. Cool stuff, but basic stuff. What, what's, what's, what's different about this? Well, we have variants of Hogan from WrestleMania 5, WrestleMania 6, and WrestleMania 3, and all of them are not wearing a bandana. Let me tell you something. I am a bizarre individual. I demand bald Hulk Hogan in my games. I don't want the stupid bandana. The bandana stays on for 10 minutes. I mean, 10 seconds. Sometime, maybe one match, it stayed on for 10 minutes. But most of the time, it stays on for 10 seconds. Get it out of here. I want to see that shiny bald head. And they have this. It looks like they're actually adding in another Hulk Hogan variant, according to some leaks that were found online. The Ichiban Japanese Hulk Hogan acts bombos for everyone. And it's like the toy figure. That's another thing they have is like a weird Cody toy figure. Like weird, but cool. It looks really well done. 
Online mode is something that I do play a lot in these games with my friends because I bully them into buying them. Shout outs to Nate the Hate and Spawnway for being bullied into buying the premium edition. MVG is, of course, being a cheap ass, though, but he's British, so what do you expect? And the online, it's not really better than than 2k23s which is a disappointment to me because there's still you know matches that just randomly drop there's still connection errors that sometimes happen there's still lag sometimes the lobby system is still archaic and you have to you know get everyone in the party and then you have to invite them to the game via the party menu on the xbox that's what we're playing it on not via the actual system itself it's just very half-assed this feels like 2002 online play and i just wish they would revamp it like I, I absolutely wish they would revamp it i will say one more thing the soundtrack is actually pretty well done as well busta rhymes there's a cool metal song from a band called speed that i had never heard of before i think post malone who i don't like curated the soundtrack but shout outs to him for putting two songs on it that i liked overall i think it's a really good game like i don't have any any main complaints about it you know it seems pretty solid i haven't really encountered any real serious glitches i know one time when we were playing online like john levitated playing as randy orton he was like hovering above the ring in like a hell in a cell match which was kind of weird but like other than that like it definitely seems like it's just a refined version of 2k23 with more added into it and you know if they continue to build upon this i think this could end up being like something really really special you know i i hope like politics not like actual politics but like backstage politics i hope it doesn't ruin too much of what could become with this franchise as far as having to remove people from it and stuff like that because i feel like the base game like they actually have something that works really well you know you could still do all your reversals the pinning system is still very similar as well so it's very familiar if you played the previous two entries but if you haven't i feel like the level of adjustment isn't quite as high as some of the other wwe games are i think wwe 2k24 is a great wrestling game and it's great to see this game kind of come out as the litmus test for upcoming wrestling games of course the indie developers are working hard on lots of stuff but i'm definitely enjoying my time with this game i want to see somebody make an rgt 85 create a wrestler though there was one on 2k23 and they face scanned me which was kind of creepy but it was a good it was a good call so make some creator wrestlers of me i want to see it make a spawn cast ring an rgt ring let's infiltrate this game you can also make signs in the game now as well which is actually a new feature so yeah, those are my thoughts on WWE 2K24. Um, by the time you're watching this video, like on Thursday or Friday, like Friday, the the standard version of the game comes out, so you don't have to pay the high price point of it. So you know you might as well just wait for that. But if you're a wrestling fan, I definitely suggest picking it up. I've been having a lot of fun with it, and I'll continue to have fun with it because John sucks at it, and I could beat him pretty much every time. Screw you, John. Give me your thoughts in the comment section down below. Did you pick up the early version of this? Are you looking forward to this game? Do you care about wrestling? And if not, why did you watch to the end of this video? I mean, I love that you did. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, comment, share, hit the bell as well. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.